Welcome back. Apple shares touching an all-time high today as the company's annual Worldwide Developer Conference continues. Let's get back to Steve Kovac out in Cupertino at Apple headquarters to recap what we've heard so far. Steve, we got that M2 Ultra system on a chip, did we not? Yeah, that's exactly it. And I think that's the biggest headline so far, John. Basically, right now, the Mac Pro was the last model that uh, hadn't moved over from Intel yet. The announcing today, this M2 Ultra chip is going to power the next model of the Mac Pro. And they have completed their transition away from Intel to their own in-house design M chips. Also taking a little shots at Intel here saying uh, the performance of these new chips are about 4x uh, what they've seen in Intel Macs. So that transition is now complete. No more Intel Macs. On top of that, John, we're getting uh, news out of uh, iOS 17. That's what they're going over right now, including what they call a standby mode, which is, for lack of a better term, kind of a nightstand mode. When you're charging your device, you can turn it to its side. It'll show photos, some widgets. If you have one of the newer iPhone 14 Pros, even when the screen uh, is that always on display, can also display some of those widgets as well. And some cool little features. I know you're asking me earlier uh, in the hour, uh, what are we gonna hear about AI? Well, one thing they did announce is it's going to help with predictive typing. So uh, the announcing today, part of iOS 17 is going to have that predictive text is going to be improved on the keyboard due to uh, transformer technology, very similar to to what ChatGPT uses, John. Better. I'm Christina Partsnevelis, and here's your CNBC Tech Check Briefing. Shares of Apple hitting a record high ahead of its annual Worldwide Developer Conference. The company is preparing to announce a number of new products and updates, including its wildly anticipated mixed reality headset. The headset will be Apple's first major new product in more than a decade and reportedly could cost $3,000. Apple's stock is up about 40% so far this year. Spotify announcing on Monday that it will lay off 200 employees from its podcasting division. This amounts to about 2% of its workforce. The music streaming giant saying the move is part of an effort to change how it handles its partnership with leading podcasters from across the globe. Spotify has invested heavily since 2020 in its podcasting unit. They spent pretty much over half a billion dollars on four acquisitions in this space. This is according to an SEC filing. Democratic senators are warning Twitter could be in hot water. After news broke last week that both Twitter's head of trust and safety as well as the head of brand safety had departed, four senators, including Elizabeth Warren, wrote to Musk and new CEO uh, that they are concerned about Twitter's ability to meet its legal obligation. Twitter entered into a consent decree with the FTC in 2011 that barred the company for 20 years from misleading consumers about its securities protections. The senators are asking Twitter questions about its security and privacy obligations. This morning, Morgan Stanley analyst Eric Woodring. Eric, good to have you back. Can you just help viewers understand how you're telling clients to think about today and what we're going to hear? Sure. I, I think your prior guests were, were totally correct in that. AR, VR, mixed reality will be the, the focal point of the developer conference today. Not just the hardware, but the tools that Apple will provide the 34 plus million developers that Apple works with to, you know, again, give them the tools to understand what we can build from an AR, VR perspective. Apple's been working on AR, VR since 2017, at least publicly, we know that. And so there are a number of APIs that are out there that, that'll help developers. But we, what we want to know today is, what does the device look like? What are the tools out there? What are the killer apps, the use cases that we all can get excited about? Um, at the end of the day, again, early on, this will not be a mass uh, consumption device. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of units have shipped. But over time, we want to know where Apple is kind of building the blocks today because the goal is eventually for this to become a mass consumer device. So, and, and you use the word consumer intentionally there as opposed to enterprise? I did. I, I did partially because I think the, the early use cases are going to, going to be more on the consumer side. That's not to say we're excluding the enterprise market at all. There are use cases that exist today in AR and VR um, and that will exist in the future with AR, VR in the enterprise. But think of Apple as largely a consumer brand getting into the enterprise. Uh, I think of the same way when it comes to mixed reality headsets. The consumer is the primary customer today. The enterprise will be a customer tomorrow. But the opportunity today is bigger uh, for the consumer. Eric, uh, discuss a little bit your thoughts about the stock. What's already built in? Now, you lifted sure. the price target to 190. We're just about there. It's just a few percent up. Are we, yeah. are we pushing against some kind of valuation ceiling? 
No, well, so like if you look back to the uh, 2022 period, Apple traded at a significantly higher multiple than this, call it five to 10 turns higher. Now that was only temporary and we were in a different interest rate regime at that point. And so we are getting close to what I would call valuation, uh, uh, valuation highs. But you know, for me, as I look forward, what really needs to happen for Apple is that they need to prove that Apple isn't actually trading at 27 or 28 times PE today. They're actually trading at 24 or 25. In other words, Apple has to show that there's upside to consensus numbers uh, over the next 12 plus months in order to drive the stock higher. If there is an earnings upside, I think it's hard to make an argument that multiple expansion will be the only driver that takes us from here into outperformance over the next 12 months. So there needs to be some combination of uh, uh, multiple expansion, but really you need to see numbers move higher. And to me, again, the three biggest factors influencing that are the iPhone 15 cycle, services reaccelerating, and then gross margin upside. You know, Eric, one of the persistent bear narratives on Apple and a bunch of other names is that their supply chain is centered in a part of the world that looks increasingly dangerous and that mm -hmm. moving it will be very complex uh, and, and take a very long time. How, how, how nimble would you say they're being on that front? So I think Apple is moving their, their supply chain on the margin. You know, notice I said on the margin, not entirely, because I think that's exactly how it is. If we take the iPhone, for example, uh, six, seven years ago, 100 percent of iPhone production was done entirely in China. Today, about 7 percent of iPhones are manufactured in India, and they're just starting to manufacture new models in India. Um, the goal is to have India to be, call it, 25 percent of builds. And so there will be a continued you know, doubling of production in India over time, but we're still talking about 75% of iPhones being built and produced in China. So um, I don't think that the entire lift and shift out of China is uh, in the cards today, but at least it has to be something that we all consider and understand the risks behind. I mean, there are other large uh, electronics manufacturers, Samsung, for example, that were once big in China that have now completely removed themselves from the country and, and produce in countries like Vietnam. Um, Apple has not communicated that is their efforts today. Um, but I do think on the margin, we will continue to see a shift from China to other Southeast Asian nations, uh, mainly India, mainly Vietnam uh, and mainly Malaysia. Yeah.